Hey there, welcome to the next and perhaps the final episode um, of reverse engineering and restoring, I guess, um, the Monroe K series calculator. Um, so, all right. Uh, so, um, when last we left off, I was about to put the cover on uh, the keyboard. So, um, before I do that, um, I do have to thread the uh, carriage lifter mechanism in. Now, one thing um, that I learned uh, the hard way is that these are kind of, um, I, think, I think they're actually ball bearings. Um, so it would be really bad, I think, to get um, to get uh, degreaser in there because it'll just dissolve all the oil that's actually inside, um, which I think is probably a bad thing. Uh, so I wouldn't actually clean this side. Um, so this rotates pretty well. This doesn't rotate very well. Um, what I'm going to do is just attempt to give it some oil. Um, this may or may not work, um, but I'm just going to stick a tiny bit of oil in there and just sort of, okay, well, it's spinning, it's certainly spinning a little freer now. So, yeah, that seemed to have worked. So, um, you know, I, I guess I'll do it on the other side as well. Um, these are probably not uh, sealed systems. So anyway, um, so that gets threaded down here. You can see where there's a, lot, a scrape mark. So I'm just going to put some oil in the U over here, and then I'm going to insert it just like that. Okay. Um, now. An interesting thing is, what exactly do these screws do? Well, this screw right over here seems to be some sort of a um, tightening device. So um, we'll deal with that later. We'll figure out what that's for later. And um, there's a spring here that goes from here to here. Okay, so this is our, um, our uh, what is it called? Item count. Okay. There's this lever, which appears to have something to do with the um, bell muting mechanism. So we're gonna to have to figure out which side of the lever it goes on to. Um, and then there's this thing, which uh, I have no idea what that does. So, Ah, but it may have something to do with um, this, which, as you will recall, is the clearing mechanism, right? Yep, is the clearing mechanism. So I think that's what this is. Uh, so let's uh, let's rotate this in that position. Uh, and then just try to put all the keys in their place. And this is probably going to be a really difficult and time-consuming task because all the keys need to fit in their slots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a long screwdriver so that I can poke at all of these things to get them uh, in their slots. That will probably be the best thing to do. So. so I think I'm just probably going to fast forward until uh, past the point where I've got all these things in. Okay, so, um, well, the good news is that um, I was able to put the plate on uh, basically by putting this side on first and then just basically working my way slowly this way. Um, so that's the good news. Um, the other good news is that if I push down the keys, keys all seem to work. They don't get stuck, which is a good thing. Mm 
Okay, so that's that's great. Um, what, okay, so one of the bad things is this. This key right over here is special because it's got a hole in it, and I didn't realize it. And it actually goes over here so that the item count uh, lever can actually go into that hole. So I'm going to have to swap these two keys. So that's one thing. Um, the other thing is that um, I still don't know um, why the uh, zero button isn't uh, doing anything. And uh, I know that there's supposed to be something here, but I don't know what that is. So that's another thing that I'm going to have to look at to figure that out. Um, I'm pretty sure, of course, that it must have something to do with um, this clearing axle here. So um, yeah, I need to uh, I need to find out what's going on. I think I think probably this key actually goes um, above something in here, so that when when I push this so that this normally stays up, so that when I push this down, this, uh, this thing rotates. So um, I may need to possibly um, remove this key, maybe, and reset it. Um, so that's one thing. Um, I'm not really sure how the uh, repeat and non-repeat uh, functions actually work. Um, I think maybe its only purpose is to, I don't know, prevent this from moving, from clearing out. Um, I don't know what automatically clears out um, the selection when you rotate uh, the cycle once. So that's that. Uh, let's see, what else? What else? Um, I still haven't quite figured out um, the purpose of, uh, there's this lever, if I can point at it right over here, that's on the underside. Um, I, I don't know what that's for. I have absolutely no idea. Um, it just seems to sit there and do nothing. Um, so I'm going to have to figure that out. Uh, so. I think I'm going to stop the video and fix all these problems. Um, so these are lessons learned. Um, and then when we come back, hopefully I should have all those problems resolved and we can continue. So when I took uh, the keyboard off, I noticed something um, which gives us um, which gives us uh, some important information about why this weird wire was here. Uh, so when I put the keyboard on, I did forget to uh, replace this spring. The spring actually goes up here onto that little uh, post over there. So what is that over here? Well, that's this mechanism right here. So uh, here, let me pull on this. So that's this mechanism right here. Now remember that um, this is also spring-loaded to force this down so that if I start turning the thing like this and I keep turning it, right, it keeps turning like that. Um, but I think the thing is that this wire was here um, I guess to prevent this from hitting this, because you can see that um, we we know that this uh, lever over here um, will prevent the uh, the cycle from going if it goes down enough. Um, okay, and now it got stuck somehow. Okay, I'm probably going to have to uh, figure that out. Why is that happening? It could be the uh, 
the reverse Paul lock mechanism. Anyway, um, wow. Wow, it really got stuck. Okay. Um, that's certainly something I'm going to have to solve. There we go. So, um, however, if this lever over here is flipped up, that moves this lever down, which prevents the machine from moving all to, well, it doesn't exactly, I guess, prevent the machine from moving. Um, I guess you can see, there, now it's preventing the machine from moving completely. So I'm still kind of wondering, okay, so I guess I guess I don't really know what this wire is for. Again, it, it seems like um, it seems like it's preventing if I if I put that wire on, it seems like it's preventing this lever from having any purpose whatsoever. But you know, that that lever does have a purpose. Um, it causes when this lever flips up, it causes the cycle to be locked. I guess I'll call it like that. So this goes up, that uh, engages this little thing over here, um, and then when you try to, to move the machine, um, it locks. So unless you pull this lever up, and then the machine, um, okay, it's also locked apparently. That's, uh... Oh, okay, and now, and now it isn't locked. That's kind of a, kind of a complicated mechanism. Um, let's see. So we turn it once, and it stops. If we flip the lever up, the cycle cannot go, but then the cycle can go again. So that's, uh... Kind of weird. I, I don't really know what's going on with that, um, but I'll leave the wire off and see what happens. So that's that. Um, that's the interesting thing that that this spring causes to happen. And I believe the mystery uh, may have been solved. Um, just by chance, I was playing around with this um, bell hammer mechanism, and I noticed that. When the bell rings, if I, if I try to flip this lever so that the bell rings, it also flips this lever up, which allows this to continue. So I think what's, what may be going on, uh, I'm not sure, but I think the carriage may have something to do with this. So that um, when the carriage overflows, maybe that causes this bell to ring. Um, which causes this thing to flip up, which causes this lever to go into its locking position. So basically it's an error detection mechanism so that, so that you don't uh, continue cycling the machine past uh, the error condition, I suppose, uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, I would have wondered, you know, why, why bother? Um, I do know that... Um, that is actually an important mechanism when you do division um, so that you keep subtracting, subtracting, subtracting. Maybe that's what it is because when, you, when you're just in the zone and you're just subtracting um, in order to do um, division, uh, when you go past zero and into the negatives, I guess this bell would ring, which would be an indication for you to stop. Um, so you would stop and then you would crank it forward again um, and then move the carriage over in order to get the next uh, digit in the division. So I think what that means is that you would be subtracting, 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 and then you could just keep going without really paying attention and then the bell would ring and the cycle would stop. 
so you wouldn't actually be able to continue subtracting. Um, so I think that's what this mechanism is for. Um, again, I, I don't know why this wire would be here. Um, so I'm going to leave it off because I think that this mechanism probably works the way it should. Uh, so that's really interesting and we will have a chance to put that to the test once the machine is fully put together. Now about um, this section, which is the, this is the zeroing key, right? So my assumption is that there's something that holds this up in the up direction because when I put the keyboard on it was just sort of like this and this didn't do anything. So my assumption is that this is kept up. Now if I look at this side right over here you can sort of see this little bit of the lever over here. There's actually a little post in here so that as I spin the wheel and I hold this up you can see that this remains up and then if I continue to spin the wheel, at some point, this thing raises up. And then it can come back down again, like that. So I think that may have something to do with um, when you're allowed to, um, to push the reset button. Because if I'm, if I'm halfway through the cycle, say like, um, okay, I just locked it up again. Hang on. All right, so if I'm maybe halfway through the cycle like this, um, okay, well, I guess I don't really know what I'm talking about. But I think it's interesting, this wheel does actually interact with this lever. So, you know, maybe as I... Um, put the keyboard on more carefully and, and observe what this lever actually does, um, perhaps I'll be able to figure out what that mechanism is supposed to do. So here's this other mechanism that I was talking about. This is the um, clearing mechanism. So um, there is a little section on this lever that you can see that interacts with this. And what I was saying earlier in the video was that I think this section of this lever goes above this lever over here. So uh, I think that uh, we can probably remove this at the bottom. That'll let, this, that'll let me take this key out, and then I can maneuver this key so that it's in its proper position. So let's go ahead and try that. I'll just uh, remove this piece of wire here, or at least attempt to. one part and I'll just squeeze these other parts together. Okay, now I should be able to pull the wire. Oh, it broke. Well, that's okay. It's just a piece of wire. Okay, so now I can attempt to remove this. No? I can't actually remove it because the keyboard's in the way. Okay, that's not so good. Um, well, I suppose maybe what I could do is um, remove this. Just unscrew it a bit so that I can actually lift this up a bit. Here, let me unscrew the other one as well. Maybe that'll give me, yeah, that gives me some room to maneuver. Now, there. I think that's the way it's supposed to work. Okay, so now let's screw this back in. Screw this back in. So now let me push this down, put 
this washer back on and then just put this wire in and it's not great but I think oops I think I should be able to shape this a little bit well no actually I can't shape this wire it has to go in and then I think if I push it enough, I can bend it so that it won't come out. Okay, can I maneuver it so that it comes out? It doesn't look like it. It's not great. I think I will have to replace that at some point, but uh, not now. Okay. All right, so um, that is the purpose of this lever, to run the clearing axle. So that works. Um, and the other thing that I did notice also as well is um, this, I think, is the repeat lever. This is the non-repeat lever. So the only purpose of the non-repeat lever is to push the, is to reset the repeat uh, lever or key stem. If I push the repeat key stem down, you notice that there's this sort of diamond-shaped hole. And the purpose of that is to actually push this lever up. And in pushing this lever up in this direction, it actually causes the lever to start to interact with um, this uh, post that I mentioned, and also uh, this piece as well, um, which moves around. Um, so that will actually cause, um, so that will actually cause this lever to, uh, I guess, let's see. So I guess at some point, this lever will have to be pushed down. And when it gets pushed down all the way, that causes, that actually makes the uh, zero key press down. So if you rotate this enough, that'll cause that to happen. Um, but only if the, uh, if the, a uh, repeat key is not set. So I think, let's see. It's possible, did I get these backwards? Did I get, no, I don't think so. Well, okay, so we'll have to see because I'm pretty sure that if this lever goes up, which means that this key stem has to be in the down position, that allows this to turn like this. So maybe this is non-repeat and this is repeat. I'm pretty sure that, yeah, that's, that's the way it must be. So when this key is down, um, yeah, so when this key is down, that's non-repeat, which means that when you run through a cycle, eventually this lever will push the zeroing, the clearing key down. So good, okay. I think that's, that's pretty much how it's supposed to work. Okay, so now all I have to do is put that cover back on and uh, hope that everything works the way I think it should. Two more mysteries possibly solved. The purpose of this lever and the purpose of this lever. So remember, I was wondering uh, what actually um, activated this clearing rod over here and this locking rod over here. Well, it turns out that there's this little notch over here that fits perfectly right over here. And in addition, well, there's no notch over here, 
But this little thing fits right over here. So obviously that has something to do with this. So that, and it probably interacts with both this and this lever. So that when this, maybe when this lever goes up, that thing moves and it maybe pushes this over. Um, so that's, uh, that's something that I'll have to look at. And as for this, um, you can see that it also moves over this notch. And this notch is for the carriage lock. So clearly that has something to do with the carriage lock. Um, exactly what, I'm not quite sure. Um, but clearly the carriage lock interacts with the keyboard lock. So I figured out this mechanism See, it goes like that. So basically, this tiny little lever over here needs to be in this position, which is kind of unfortunate because it can actually rotate around to the point where, um, that is when you put the plate on, it can rotate around to the point where it actually doesn't, um, doesn't actually do anything. Um, but it needs to be in this position behind this so that, and you can see these bales inside move so that they get cleared. So let me turn this around to here so that you can see the entire thing. Um, it took a long, long time for me to get this plate back on. Um, and it's not only getting the plate back on, but also making sure that um, making sure that the clear bar here and the lock bar here went into their slots. Um, in my opinion, this is a really fragile design because. Um, these two bars just barely go into these slots. I would have made these a lot higher so that I could get the slots aligned properly. Um, there is indeed a locking mechanism um, on this side. Uh, there is a lever like inside here, um, which if you can see this, it moves. So that was the purpose of that lever over here. Uh, let's see what else. Oh yeah, as I was testing it, um, this thing actually moved and sort of got wedged in the gear teeth. So I was turning the, uh, the wheel and wondering why it wasn't turning. Did I lock something up? No, it was just that uh, this was not uh, fixed yet. So let's, uh, let's just test it out just to make sure that things are working. Um, so we've got some keys that we can press. And if we press the zero key, indeed, we can see that they clear. So we can also do this and press the, the master zero key. Okay, that definitely clears out. We can uh, just press a whole bunch of buttons and make sure that that clears things out. It does. Um, we, we would basically go through all of these buttons so that's fours, fives, sixes, sevens, eights, oops, and nines. Good. Um, the other thing that we want to test um, is that the repeat, non-repeat mechanism works. So looking at it from, I guess, this perspective, when this key is down, this lever is that way. Um, let's see. Yeah, when this, when this key is down, that lever is that way, which means that it's going to clear using that uh, little uh, mechanism that I showed you. So if I punch in some numbers and then I go ahead and rotate one cycle, hopefully, they should clear. 
Yep, there we go. So, and if I press the repeat button down and push a whole buttons, push a whole bunch of buttons and do a cycle. Right, the button doesn't clear. So, all right. So that's uh, basically the cover. Uh, let's put everything else back on. Next up, we have these decimal indicators. Um, they go basically in between these uh, keys like that. So then you can rotate them shiny side up. Actually, I think that was supposed to be white. Um, but anyway, um, it goes like this. And you can see here at the bottom, uh, these screws actually go in these holes. And then um, we also have this. So that goes in there as well. So we just need to loosen these screws up and get the bottom part in. Um, or, no, let's go get the, the top part in first uh, so that we can just slide these in. So we have this screw. And I did purposely uh, or purposefully um, screw all of these in first because we needed to get the plat the the plate the top plate perfectly flat um, so that all the parts underneath were in the right place. So speaking of that, I think that in order to construct this, um, in order to put this together, they must have used some sort of a tool that was like a big piece of sheet metal that had slots that went all the way across, just one slot all the way across. And I think the purpose of that, uh, well, I know that the purpose of that would be to align all of these stems, um, probably in addition to these tiny little um, stems um, that I really hate. Um, but it seems to me that that would make uh, putting the top plate on a lot easier because then once everything was aligned, you could just, in theory, push the top plate down and then pull, pull that plate out. Um, so that seems kind of like a, a reasonable idea to me. Uh, we have this, um, oops, did I? Yeah, this is gonna go like this in this orientation. So hopefully when I pull these screws out, the plate doesn't pop up because that's kind of bad. All right, let's just uh, hand tighten these screws in here just so that we can get everything aligned properly. There we go. So that's this one. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to, um, oh yeah, we need to definitely loosen the screws on the bottom. And the top plate is a little worse for wear. I mean, the, uh, the, the, the top screws, they are a little loose. <laughs> they are a little um, worn at the top. The paint is uh, coming off, you know, because I keep screwing them on and off and on and off. Um, I think that maybe um, when they put this together, they must have given it another dab of paint. Okay, so these guys will go here and I'll fit, I'll orient them all in the same direction. Yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, and then I'm just going to one by one place these in their holes. Fairly, fairly straightforward. Uh, 
<laughs> or not. Um, I think I think probably because these can bend. Well, no, they don't they don't really bend. Okay. So I'm just going to lean it up like this. And then I'm going to put all of the things in, all of the stems in. Why is it uh, being so difficult? Okay, put them all in. There we go, almost, yeah, okay. So they're all in. So now I can just lay this one down carefully. Make sure the, the uh, parts are all in there, yes. And now I can just hand tighten these screws just to get them in place. And yeah, this has a bend to it. So what I'm gonna do is tighten up this bottom screw here but not all the way. Then I'm going to tighten up this screw, but not all the way. And then this bottom part is a bit bent, so um, I do have to put the tops back in. And just sort of hold it. Okay, and now I will just put the last screw in. Okay, now I can tighten up these other ones. sure the top ones are tightened, yes. Okay, so that's basically how that works. Um, the idea is that they would all be um, facing this way so that they sort of blend in to the background. But then when you wanted um, to put on a decimal, like let's suppose you wanted these to be cents, you would just do that and you would say, okay, that's my decimal indicator. And it, it does look like this was probably white at one point, um, or maybe there really isn't any paint on it at all because it's all kind of shiny. So, um, yeah. Well, in any case, it doesn't really matter because again, the rule for antiques is that you never uh, restore the outside. You maybe take some of the dust away, you maybe take some of the dirt away, but you never, ever repaint, ever. You don't fix scratches, you don't do any of that stuff, because otherwise it doesn't look authentic. Okay, um, oh, and notice that this key is now restored. It's got the hole in it, which this thing goes into, so that if I rotate this and attempt to clear it, you can see that the one key uh, does not rise. If I turn that, now the one key is cleared. So, so that's the correct thing. All right, um, I think the next thing that we're going to do is um, we're going to put the carriage back on. So let me uh, alter the camera angle here so that we can see the top. So here is this. Um, should we do that now or not? Well, I think we, I think we do need to uh, because we at least want to test that this is actually working. Um, I have my doubts about a spring that went in here. I think that the spring was maybe pulled a little too hard because you can see how it's kind of loose a bit when I do that. And I think that if the spring were tighter, um, you wouldn't get that play. So uh, I have a little bit of doubts about that. 
So uh, let's put on, um, we have, um, we should have a spring on either side, or at least a spring here. Um, yeah, so the thing is that I think when you put this on, yeah, actually this spring goes on this side. Um, the idea uh, being that, I think, let's see. The idea is that you, know, you want to have this range of motion here, but you don't want uh, the, the sides banging into the walls. So it's not going to be like this. It's definitely going to be like this. So you can see that this spring prevents this from moving any further in this direction. So then in the other direction, it's going to go like this, like this, like this. And then so the real question is, you know, should the spring be over here or should it be over here? Um, I'm going to put it over here. Um, and I'm going to get the... Uh, the rod here, which we know goes thread side that way. This is just a slot cut in there. So we'll put this on and let's see what happens. So put this through there, put this through there, go put the spring on there and just, oops, I missed. And you do have to lean this forwards in order to get it to line up properly. So you just sort of push it in. I'm not going to screw it yet. All right, so uh, that's that. Let's make sure that uh, the... Uh -huh. So you see these locks are now in place. Or are they? They're not in place. Okay. So um, the idea is that we should be able to, um, well, I can lift this just to help it along and attempt to rotate this like that. Yeah, that's a little, uh, that may need a little bit of adjustment. Not sure what kind of adjustment. Ah, okay. What was happening was, again, because this, uh, this axle is loose, it can go you know, in and out. And if it goes in a little bit, um, you'll end up um, locking this. So let's just make sure if we go all the way down to the end, right, that's it. So this last digit lines up with this last, uh, with this last row of keys. So we can go one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's, well, six in a little bit. So you can go um, six positions this way. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, that's right, there is, there does not appear to be any more room. Let's uh, go ahead and lift the lock. Oh, well, that's interesting. I can't actually seem to pull on the lock. Oh, well, okay, I guess I can. Yeah, so that's about as far as it's gonna go. I'm not, sh I'm not sure if it's supposed to go further. Um, because if it, if it can go further, this spring could possibly be on that side. Well, let's do that experiment. Let's put the spring over on the other side and see if this actually moves just ever so slightly over so that we can get seven digits instead of uh, six, six digits of movement in the carriage. So let's go ahead and remove that. Let's go ahead and thread the rod back in. And we are going to put the spring on the other side. See if that makes a difference. 
So uh, let's bring it all the way back. Okay, so there's zero. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that's obviously where that goes. Good. Uh, so we'll do that, right? Yeah, it's not going any further. So, so we'll call it seven digits. Um, that is a little bit odd, though, because if we do that, um, this gear does get exposed. So I don't know about that. I mean, you do get seven digits, but on the other hand, you get this part exposed, which you never really want. Um, and yeah, OK. So I, I can check the video, and I can always correct this later. But uh, let's see. It would probably have been here. And that part would be exposed anyway. OK, let's, let's just leave it like this. Good enough. Um, let's, uh, let's test the mechanism. So I'm going to bring this all the way down to 0. Um, I'm going to run the clearing mechanism. Good. Now, as you can see, the, the, the uh, carriage lifted as I was rotating this, and then it dropped into place, which is the correct thing. Um, let me install this crank right on the side here. Get it lined up and pull this out. Okay. So that way I can turn it more easily. So let's, I put in a one, um, and I forget uh, if this is non repeat. Um, this is non repeat. So let me put it on repeat. So what we should see is um, the first digit um, loading ones. One, two, three. Let's see if the carry mechanism works. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Aha, OK, yeah, that's interesting. The carry works on this one, but there is no carry over here. In fact, this digit turns red which I guess would be negative numbers. So we can subtract. Let's uh, get it to the right ending position. Subtract. OK, let's put in a 9 and run it. Oh, that was an 8, sorry. 16, 24, 32. Let's just give it another couple of goes. 80, 88, 96, 104. Yeah, so that's working. Let's put in some 9s at the top. OK, uh, some more 9s. All right. To me, that seems to indicate that it's working pretty well. Um, let's do a subtraction. Let's subtract 300115. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 0. Of course, I didn't need to do that. 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and subtract. Hmm. Oh, there was a 9 here. Yep. I should have pressed clear. So now I can subtract the 1 from here. OK, there we go. So we've got a total of, um, of 100 million now. So, uh, and we can rotate the carriage over and subtract that one if we wanted to. And that was a 9. And I subtracted 9100. OK, so clear that. Um, yeah, we've got 9s here now. So I wonder how the bell mechanism works. Um, because if I'm doing some subtraction, right? Uh, like, let's suppose I'm, um, OK, let me just do an add. OK, so now you can see that there are all zeros over here. Now, if I do a subtraction of like 1 from here, I should get all 9s here, right? Yeah, but the bell didn't go off. 
Why didn't the bell go off? Well, I mean, the bell is on. So one possibility is that the carriage has to be in the farthest position, maybe. So let's see what happens if I subtract uh, one now. Oops, that's adding one. Hmm. Okay, well, it didn't seem to ring, um, which means that there may be something wrong with the bell, the bell ringer. Uh, let's see if we can see any possible mechanism on the underside. Um, yeah, there, there, is, there is this rotational thing, which is very difficult to rotate, and I think that's probably the main reason. So I may want to look at that um, to see, because this little gear over here should probably just, you know, go ahead and ring that thing every time it turns, maybe. Yeah, see, that was supposed to, um, I think, ring the bell, I think. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Okay, that was actually interesting. If you'll notice, see, I can't move it. That's because whenever this thing um, changes over from nine to zero or from zero back to nine, that locking mechanism goes into, uh, into play. So if I let this go and then continue, I can continue, right? Now if I'm subtracting, let's suppose I do this, and I'm subtracting, oh, well, that actually seemed to work okay. I'm not sure why. I'm going forwards. And it stops. Um, that's interesting. I don't know why the mechanism isn't working backwards, or if it's even supposed to work on uh, backwards. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is actually supposed to work backwards. It's just that because the bell mechanism isn't isn't working, um, the bell mechanism is also connected to um, this uh, this little locking mechanism. So so there there may be a problem over here. But aside from that, I'm pretty pleased with the way this works. Uh, this has worked out. Um, there's some uh, there's some um, not really grinding, but some sort of a uh, friction noise coming from here. That may be just the gears. Um, I may want to track down the location of what's going on there um, in order to put some oil in there to uh, prevent these parts from rubbing and deteriorating. So uh, let's go ahead and put, um, I've got a whole bunch of uh, screws and things um, over here which need to go in. So let me go ahead and do that. Um, that is going to involve, um, putting these plates back on, basically. Um, I'm first going to just, you know, give them a little clean. Um, there's some oil in here that I'm going to get rid of with the industrial maintenance coating thinner. Um, and then we should be good to go. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. So what have we got left? Well, we've got uh, these four feet, and I believe at the beginning of the series of, uh, of this um, playlist, I did say that I was missing, that the back feet were missing. They actually are not. I had just forgotten these. Um, and we have some, we have four thick screws. We have four large thin screws. We have one um, large headed screw. We've got eight of these small screws. And then we've got the handle. Um, we've got the uh, set screw or actually not a set screw, it actually goes through. Um, so it's not a set screw, but it's a screw uh, with the handle and uh, this um, thing that goes onto the handle like that. Um, so the unfortunate thing about the uh, plates is that you've got this uh, round hole uh, that's not a U shape, which means that um, you have to put this on before you put the handle on. Uh, but I believe that the first thing that we can do is uh, put the base plate on. So here's the base plate. 
Um, and what we are going to also do is um, move the camera a little bit. So face the camera up a bit, just a bit like that. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is take the carriage off so that I can turn the calculator, the entire calculator, upside down. And there goes that spring. I'm going to have to oil that. Can't forget that. And I'm going to take the crank handle out. Okay, now I'm going to just turn this upside down carefully. Um, eh. Before I do that, let me get some oil and uh, just oil the, uh, the gears here. Because I think that once I put the covers on, going to be a little bit difficult to, uh, to get to. Okay. That should be enough to um, distribute the oil when I start turning the gear. So let me go ahead and turn the gear a couple times. You know, there's still that scraping sound. I don't really know where that's coming from. It seems to be coming from this side. Um, so I'm just going to put some extra oil, like, I don't know, here. Probably won't do anything. But, uh, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, so let's see. Uh, let me take the crank handle back out. Turn this upside down. Maybe with these gears facing up. Okay. And let's put the base plate on. So the base plate consists of two parts. One is this um, mat, um, which is reminiscent of an ink blotter. Um, and I think basically it's to catch the oil. Um, on the other side, it's just, I don't know. I'm pretty sure they cut this out of ink blotter material. So uh, let's see, which way does it go? Presumably it goes this way, I think. Well, okay, so we've got these two, we've got two holes here. They obviously line up with these. So um, if we attempt to line these two holes up like this, the back falls out basically. So obviously it goes in the other direction. Let's just put this in place first. And then we can put this in place like that. Okay. Um, Eight holes implies eight screws, doesn't it? Um, however, I know that the uh, small screws, these guys, um, I believe are for these. So it's obviously not gonna be those. Um, and I maybe, uh, let's see. I should probably check the video. Okay, well, it's obviously not these screws, that's for sure, because those, those don't work at all. So it has to be these thick screws. So let's go ahead and put these thick screws on the inside, maybe? I don't know. The inside sounds good enough. Um, obviously, there should be eight screws. Well, no, okay. I don't think that's right. Or there could be eight screws. So let's just finger tighten these guys. So now we've got these guys, right? Which go in, do they go in there? No. Do they go in there? No. Ah, this one goes here. Well, this one does seem to uh, fit here. 
It obviously goes on the back because you want the back to be raised. So that would be like that. And this would have to be here. Yeah, this would have to be here. Like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, get a thicker screwdriver and tighten these down. I maintain that there should have been washers here. Okay, and then let's uh, screw these bottom ones down first. spin these on, or not. We do have to screw them on. Screw these feet on. So these are pretty um, ugly rubber um, feet. Um, I don't know that we're going to be able to replace them. I don't know that we want to replace them. But it would be kind of nice, because um, Certainly not very soft, but then again, maybe they don't have to be that soft. Okay, that should be that. Now, now there are actually uh, threaded uh, s threaded holes on these four sides, so um, maybe that's where um, some other kind of foot goes. I don't know, or maybe they're for shipping screws. That's entirely possible. In fact, I think that's very likely that these were for shipping screws. So uh, that's kind of an interesting discovery. All right, let's turn this over. Okay, see, that's how it's supposed to stand, just like that. Yeah, it's a little wobbly. Probably because the feet aren't very aren't in very great condition, but you know I guess that's okay. Uh, okay, so let us now go ahead and put the front plate on. So let's move the camera a bit. Uh, let's try to move the camera a bit. Okay, I guess that's pretty good. All right, so. Uh, so here's the front plate. Um, obviously, we have to uh, put it like right, right here. Um, the, I believe it fits on the inside the bottom like this. I don't think it goes on the outside like this. I'm pretty sure that the bottom actually fits inside. I could be wrong, but in any case, um, so so we have this little piece, and then we have the handle and the screw. Um, this little piece goes over here on top, just like that, just like that, and then this goes in like that, and then the handle. Line that up, put the screw on, let me go ahead and get a small bit, and you know what, I'm going to oil that first. because I know that these screws are always a problem to get off. There we go. 
Okay, see, and now it doesn't move back and forth anymore, which is uh, exactly what we want. Um, it rotates, uh, it does rotate, doesn't it? Which kind of means that we want to um, oil that part that I just put on. So it's as easy as taking it off, oiling the inside, putting some oil here, sliding it back on. There we go. Now it's a little better. Um, screw. Ah, oh, all right. See, this is what this is what really annoys me about this part is that you have to put this on first. All right. So oiled up and working well that it slides around. Okay. There we go. That's very nice. All right, good. So, um, all right, so now we've got this basically hanging off there. Uh, so the next step. Um, we've got this, uh, let's see. All right, so we've got eight small screws, four long screws, and a big screw. So where do they go? So um, this part is the uh, left-hand side. So let's... Uh, Let's take a look at that. And actually, if we spin this around, you can see these standoffs here. One, there's one over here, and two, and, uh, two others on the other side. I think that's really the purpose of these, uh, these long screws. So that gives us a good clue. So let's go ahead and put this on. Um, this goes over top like that. You know, I think now that I look at it, it's pretty clear that because this actually goes out, it's supposed to go over the bottom piece. I think that may be true of um, this piece as well. Which is a bit odd because um, over here, right over here, is the uh, the model number and the serial number. Um, okay, so that would be covered. That's fine. That's okay. Um, unfortunately, now we need to take the front handle off again. So let's just do that. Lift this up, put it back. Screw it back in. Okay. So just like that. And now we'll put this plate on so it'll just fit right over it. Just like that, kind of. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix it in place with the uh, long screw. So I'm going to apply a little bit of oil to the screw and line it up the stand off and screw it in. Am I lined up? Yeah. Okay, let's just go ahead and tighten that up. I really need a bigger, bigger bit. Okay. 
Okay. And another screw. Here on the other side. I may be getting this uh, a little bit backwards because I may have had to put the back plate on as well. Here's the back plate. Um, yeah, the back plate actually goes inside here, so it can just slip right in, just like that. And then I can turn this around and put on the right side plate. Make sure it fits on the front, just like that. And I get these long screws. Put them in the standoffs. Oh, yeah, I know what this is for. <laughs> this is for the carriage shaft. Okay, stand off here. And get that lined up. I don't think it's quite lined up. There we go. Okay, and now uh, let's start with the back first. Um, we've got the eight short screws. Um, they just serve to um, put the plates together. Uh, they don't actually attach to the frame. Um, but I'm going to oil them nevertheless. So they just go in these four corners here. Okay, and now the uh, final part is to put the carriage back on. So let's go ahead and do that. So we take the carriage rod and put it in. Oh, uh, we were going to oil some things, weren't we? So we definitely need to oil inside here. And uh, here, here. And here, and then put it through, and the spring on this end, put it all the way through, and put the screw over here. Where'd my oil go? Here. And that should be that. Ah, the very last step. Well, the second to the last step is to put the crank on. Sorry, I just had to look at it. And the final step is that we have all of these buttons to put on. So, let's see. Let's take a look at the set of buttons we have. Um, I did try to clean them. Let's uh, move the camera down. I did try to clean them, but they didn't really clean up that well. 
and a few of them are cracked. So here we have a clear button. Um, this, these are some pieces of buttons. There's a repeat button and there's the non-repeat button. So we know that the clear button goes on the bottom and I'm pretty sure that the um, non-repeat goes on top. So um, what else have we got? Well, we've got black keys and red keys. The red keys are the zero keys. So we've got some of those. Um, this one is cracked. So I may try to maybe glue these pieces back on. Um, unfortunately, let's see. We've got seven of those. And one of them is missing, apparently. All right. So I may have to do some 3D printing anyway. Um, and we've got what appear to my eye anyway, well, it's kind of hard to say, but I think there may be more black keys than white keys. So how many sets of nine do we have? Four, eight, nine. So there's one set of nine two sets of nine, three sets of nine, five, six, seven, eight, nine, four sets of nine, and one, two, three, six, nine, five sets of nine. So we've got clearly five sets of nine and three sets of uh, five sets of black and three sets of white. Okay, so I'm going to carefully take these broken plastic pieces. Okay, uh, so we can simply put them on. Let me set these aside. So we will raise the camera slightly. Maybe like that. And uh, we'll deal with these three keys first. So we know that the bottom one is clear. Uh, the top one is non-repeat, I'm pretty sure. And the next one is repeat. Okay. Uh, clearly, the bottom ones are zero, and unfortunately, we are missing one. Zero. This is one of the broken keys, but it fits on pretty well anyway. And there we go. And there we go. The calculator is complete. All the buttons are on except for the one missing zero button, uh, but that's okay. Um, so just uh, a few of the problems. Um, the first problem is that uh, the bell mechanism doesn't seem to ring. The second problem is that there is a zero key missing, um, but aside from that, it all seems to work pretty well. Uh, let's try a calculation, shall we? Uh, let me move this all the way over. Okay, let's try a calculation where the result is going to appear at the top. So we will load up 22 over here. Okay, now let's clear out the top register. And divided by so we're going to click on repeat, and we're going to subtract 1, 2, 
three. Now we know that we're going to uh, overflow, so I'm just gonna keep going, and then we subtract. Okay, so the result of 22 over 7 is 3.1428571. Um, I'm just going to check it with my, uh, with, um, with my calculator, just to uh, see what that is. 22 divided by 7 is 3.1428571. All right, so. There we go. That is the Monroe K calculator. Um, nearly fully restored. Uh, let's see if we can zoom out slightly. Um, again, a few problems with it, but other than that, it seems to work pretty well. Um, and I got two buttons <laughs> reversed. These two buttons reversed, so I can fix that. Anyway, I guess that's about it. Um, so thanks for hanging on uh, for all of these uh, episodes. There were quite a few of them and it took quite a long time, but we were all learning along the way. Um, so go check out my other playlists where I uh, reverse engineer other calculators. So um, I'll be seeing you, bye.